everybody. Welcome to RTX at home. More importantly, welcome to the recorded by Arizal panel. Before I introduce all of the lovely people here, I'd like to say, hey, a big thank you to HBO Max for being the presenting sponsor of Rooster Teeth Animation Festival. Searching for what to watch next? No problem. Introducing the amazing world of HBO Max. At HBO Max, animation isn't just for kids. We've got the goods for grown-ups too. Thank you, HBO Max, again for sponsoring all of this. We truly appreciate it. Now let's actually uh, go around here and introduce everybody here. Let's uh, let's start with the woman of the hour, Isa herself. Oh, hello! Hey. <laughs> Don't look at me, please. <laughs> <laughs> Hi guys, I'm Isa. I am the uh, creator. Co-creator, co-developer, writer, co-writer. Co There's a lot that I do for recorded by RSL. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and of course, we have Joshua. Hello. Big hands for Joshua. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, hi. And... <laughs> Go ahead. Oh, I don't know what we're doing. I, I'm not professional at, at, the, at the panel. Uh, <laughs> All right. Do you want to tell everyone. everybody what you do? Okay. If you insist. <laughs> um, yeah. I, I co-developed the show with Issa. I write on it and I edit the show. But that's it. <laughs> that's it. That's, it. that's simple. That's, that's and of course, course, do of course, of course, we have the voice of Arizal herself, Christy Marie Gavinos! Yay! Yay! I'm so excited to be here. I'm so, I'm so happy to be here. <laughs> yeah, that's, she with basically everybody. said what I do. I'm the voice of Arzal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm so happy to be here with everybody. I'm super excited about everything that's about to we're about to show. Everybody, we've got some surprises. But before that, I want to start with the big surprise. You ready for the big surprise? I would like big to, surprise. for everybody, you know, it's like get some clap emojis in, in going already. Because I would love for everybody to show your love for Arizal with the brand new first ever Merc we have for Recorded by Arizal. Look at how cute it is! It's so great. <laughs> I love everything about it. Issa, do you want to talk us uh, through a little bit of the process of bringing Arzar to life and, and her, her world on this shirt? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> you can see it, right? So um, the idea kind of came up of like, oh, Issa, what, would you like to design one? And be like, okay. I'm not as great of a designer as Michelle and the rest of the graphics team, but I thought it would be nice to kind of, I think the biggest prompt was kind of like, um, what... Uh, how do you encapsulate a prelude into one single shirt when I feel like the prelude for our soul kind of encompassed a lot of different meanings for all of us? Um, so it really kind of just comes down to our soul doing what she liked and then kind of all the different incomplete stuff about her room and things like that. <laughs> I just wanted her to be happy. <laughs> <laughs> I think we all kind of want ours all oh, to be yeah. happy. Uh, so I, I want to say, uh, Christine, you hadn't seen the shirt before today. What's your yeah. reaction to to seeing ours all? There's merch. What, what, how do you feel? I was so excited. I mean, I wish you'd like screen capped my face when I first saw <laughs> that both of them were wearing the shirts. I was, yeah. I like want one so bad. <laughs> Literally just before we we started, <laughs> Christy just got to see the shirt for the first time. It was the most yeah. wholesome moment ever <laughs> of all time. <laughs> and if that doesn't speak volumes to like how much representation matters, I don't know what does. Like seriously, mm -hmm. and that's a lot about what what we're going to talk about today. And on top of many other things that you might not have seen before and might not have you haven't seen before and i'm very excited <laughs> to to show you all of that and uh let's actually start with that how's that sound okay <laughs> all right so this we've got some prelude concept art this is the room that we see in in all of the vlogs so yes. Issa, do you want to talk us a, a little bit through creating arizal's room and how you encapsulated you know, the world of Maktaba and also Arzal's personality into like, there's a lot here. 
<laughs> one of the uh things so lots of like little character drops for everyone here as well one of the things i told al the uh artist production artist working on this one um who's also uh worked with us as a storyboarder for a lot of our different projects and he storyboarded uh rsl um one of the things i told him was she lives with her aunt uncle and cousin and they're basically like in a one floor apartment. Um, so how can they fit another child into their one floor apartment? Is it kind of just like a, an office space in the corner that they ended up converting into a bedroom? So what does that look like, especially in this futuristic setting? So it's like, is it like a corner? Is it a curved corner? Is it, uh, are there different angles? So that was like, even down to like what the room is shaped like. I think we kind of went with the normal, just like a four corner room. But then uh, the big thing about Arisol as well is that it's like, she's weird because she has a lot of physical items and this is mm -hmm. like, like a whole digital age that we're playing around with that josh and i were talking about a lot like what does it mean to be part of a digital age um so there's always kind of these comments of like she has so much stuff <laughs> she has um, a lot of stuff she has a lot of stuff and this this is a comment or, or a constant uh struggle i have whenever i'm moving it's just like god i have so much stuff like you don't really realize how much stuff you have until you try to pack it um so and similarly it's like it's it's well placed but uh compared to everyone else who kind of has a lot more like digital knickknacks or knickknacks lol um <laughs> digital things are like things that are on like a on a flat surface that is what we would consider like the idea futuristic and compact um what our Saul's room would be is more uh, indicative of like things that she what's the word I'm looking for appreciates like things mm -hmm. that she just wants to surround herself and like be her own escape in her room so yeah so I want to ask a, a question because it's 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 very pointed out she has a favorite item in her room yeah she made a point to to cry over it was that inspired by anything or was that just like did that just come to you this is like well she she obviously loves to read it's pointed out a bunch of times and she has to like to be a record keeper she's gonna have to travel light which means that books are heavy and she's gonna have to give up a lot of her stuff is is there was that inspired by anything in particular Oh man, well, Josh, I'm actually going to throw this to you if you like thought of anything before I, I answer something. Anything specific? I mean, yeah, like yeah. we knew it, it's kind of like I remember in my first like kind of spec script to see if if uh, I would be a good fit for writing for the show. I immediately was like, I'm going to take something physical that she likes and I'm going to break it because I want to see her <laughs> react to it and respond to it and and to, to, to demonstrate how she does value like physical things. And I think that that kind of spirit is still in this in, in this version. We not we don't break her book. Don't worry. We won't do that. But um, <laughs> yeah, it was just like to communicate to just further illustrate that not only does she love all these physical things, but there is a specific one that holds the the most value to her. I, um... Okay, so there's there's something I also want to bring up. Uh, in that same in that same episode, we see Arizal get really frustrated, and she screams into a pillow, and she just kind of has this like, <laughs> you see the little dark circles under her. She's she's having a moment. She's having a moment, uh, and it's right before she ends up crying over her book. Uh, Christine, do you want to take us through that range of emotions that she had to go through? <laughs> That's actually like my favorite scene. I, <laughs> I remember in the I remember that day in the booth because I was with them, <clears throat> and I just asked like, would it be more realistic if if I just screamed into my jacket? So I really did just take my jacket and shove my face into it <laughs> and scream like that. <laughs> I mean, and it feel I mean if you've never done it before, it feels great to just like scream into a pillow <laughs> or your jacket. <laughs> but I, yeah, I loved that scene, and uh, yeah, like the that's like the turn in the you know in the prelude that I loved. It, it was I think it was like unexpected for some people. They didn't think it was going to go like that kind of way. Oh but, yeah, yeah I, I loved it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's roll on to some more concept arts. 
specifically, let's talk about Arizal first, because I mean, she's, oh my gosh, she's so adorable. So, I love yeah. her so much. Seriously, thank so, you. So how many, how many concept designs uh, did Arizal go through? I mean, we're, we're seeing a lot of oh. little different things here, but I imagine, yeah. I mean, I know you've been working on this for quite some time, Issa. There, there, you must have had a bunch of different it's ideas like, floating um... around in your head. Talk us through about the creation of Arizal as far as design is concerned. Yeah. Uh, hmm, this is so before when I had like initially pitched, I'm, I'm that person who tends to stick to my first idea pretty, uh, solidly. So, uh, that's kind of the downside, right? Is that like, if I'm, if, uh, when you're coming up with different ideas, you actually want different iterations so you can really be sure and land on the best one. <laughs> For me, it's always just about like changing little details. Um, so I think man i'm trying to think <laughs> like what what went through my mind while this was like going on um one of the, so two big inspirations at least i can say about like this particular piece is that like uh as my style evolved uh one i definitely took some inspiration from akko from little witch academia um and then two is um deku actually from my hero also academia. My little, wait, are they both academias? Oh my God, I didn't realize this. <laughs> Issa's oh, realizing God. something very yeah, deep and personal about here. herself I, right now. I was just like talking and I think my brain stopped and I was like, wait, did I just say the same thing twice? I can't remember. <laughs> Um, but yeah, just kind of both of these characters have these like really wide, eye this like wide eyed appeal um, about going after their goals and their dreams um, 100%. So I think going on from there and kind of just being like, okay, well, what, what does she look like if she was Filipino? And then going from there. <laughs> I mean, that's the, that's the easiest way to go about it is it's like, okay, yeah. I like these design aspects. How do I make them very personal to me? And it yeah. shows, it really mm -hmm. does. She's incredibly expressive. Those big eyes really just kind of like, they sparkle and shine. And then when you have that, when you finally <laughs> get to that third part, she's just, you know, you see her, her pupils dilate and she's having a moment and it's, mm -hmm. it really is great. Oh, thank you. Oh, by the way. <laughs> I have a comment on the character design, by the way. My, uh, I showed this to my cousin, who is also yeah. Filipino, and she like loved that. She's like, I love that her skin is so dark and her hair is so oh. black, mm -hmm. and she's like, she looks like me. And I was like, <laughs> oh. oh. Yeah, because she oh, no. yeah, like my cousin does kind of look like what Arisa looks like, very long hair, oh, wow. dark black, and very tan, tan tanner yeah. than I am. And yeah, I just loved that she like identified with it so much, and she loved how you guys designed her so well done oh thanks oh, christy thanks yeah. christy's cousin best. oh no we, uh, <laughs> you know to 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 follow up on that uh the the first episode of arizal went viral a little bit because oh, yeah. of that <laughs> there were so many people who were you know having those moments and it, it really does like it speaks from the heart when somebody's able to point at the screen and just be like that looks like me I, I, I understand this. I feel this. And Arizal really resonated with everybody. And it's it really speaks to, you know, the design of Arizal that, you know, you really took time and care to make sure that everything about this was completely representative. And I mean, it went viral. It it it, it did its job. <laughs> and it's so amazing. And I'm so happy for this. Thanks. Yeah, like Don't look at me. <laughs> There were like so, TikToks on it yeah, and like oh, yeah. it was so good. <laughs> yeah. So sweet. Thanks, guys. They even love that her her school uniform. She's like, that's the kind oh, yeah. I wear in the Philippines. <laughs> yeah. And they're like, yeah, I was like, oh my God. I it was uh it's funny because this the skirt actually, fun fact is um the skirt that I ended up choosing was like, oh, this is actually easier, a little easier to animate <laughs> versus the <laughs> other skirt designs um that we had done so uh <laughs> it was like both a tech reason but also like a personal reason mm -hmm. of just like you know i don't actually see a lot of anime that um do the the long the long skirt uh long even like a mid-sleeve uniforms in the philippines that i normally see every mm -hmm. summer <laughs> <laughs> Oh yeah. Okay, right. so so let's bring up the next picture of Arizal, which is the 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 finalized concepts, the turnaround. Oh, yeah. And uh, oh. here she is in all of her amazing <laughs> glory. And oh, I wanna good. I wanna turn a little bit, just a little bit, since this is the this is the realized version of Arizal. I wanna turn to Christine real quick. 
-hmm. How did you come up with, you know, the, the tone and, mm -hmm. and manner of speech mm -hmm. that Arizal has? I mean, it was all based on their description of her being, yeah, like wide eyed, interested, curious, like en enthusiastic about what she likes and things like that. So, I mean, her voice is pro probably closer to my regular voice, the one I'm mm. using right now, than a lot of other characters that I've done. So it wasn't very, it came very naturally to me. Oh, mm. one sec. <clears throat> <laughs> Sorry. Oh, water break for everyone. Yeah. <laughs> Drink your water. Time to water. Yeah. Time to water. Hydrate, hydrate, everybody. Speaking of, yeah. I'm Cheers. Out. I'm out. <laughs> Cheers. <laughs> but yeah, like she, yeah, again, uh, I feel like I instantly, I don't want to sound cliche or anything, but I really feel like I instantly clicked with the character of Arisol, and I hope that came across when I auditioned, and I'm hoping that's why, I guess that's why you picked <laughs> me. But, but yeah, like, I relate to Arisol's, like, her that during that, that age of like innocence, when you're like, anything is possible, I can, like, I'm going to go out and do whatever, you know, whatever I want to do in the world. And, and people also relate to that, her turn also the, oh, yeah. you know, like, I don't know what I'm doing. Like, I still don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So it, she's a very relatable, likable character. So it wasn't very hard. Fantastic. <laughs> All right. Let's bring up that, uh, that turnaround real quick. One more time. Okay, Isa, <laughs> Joshua, tell me a little bit about, you know, getting to this finalized design. Ooh, ooh, what's that? Mm. Man, you're asking questions. I'm like, wow, I haven't even <laughs> <laughs> Because we've been, we've been done with production for so long, and um, at least from the prelude, so it's actually kind of like, oh, trying to revisit where, where we were at this moment. Um, Man, Josh, do you have any thoughts? <laughs> I mean, I, the thing about all the art stuff, which was so exciting for me, was that like I was definitely more on the writing side, like the, the pre-production side of things and the post-production side of things. So in the in the middle, the juicy parts of seeing all the animation and the art come in, I could just kind of be like a fan for it. And so I was very excited <laughs> to like, you would slack me like, what do you think, A or B, A, B or C? And I just like, they're all oh, yeah. fantastic. I'm not super helpful, <laughs> but I'll encourage you. They all look great to me. <laughs> and this is why Josh is my writing partner. <laughs> gives me all the validation I need. <laughs> oh yeah, anytime you need it. Okay. Oh, thanks, Josh. <laughs> you know what? Speaking of validation, there are two other characters that are very much part of Arzal's world and a part of her own validation. So let's take a look at Leah and Rosella's, you know, concept arts. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so here's <laughs> Leah. Yeah, <laughs> so <laughs> one of the ideas that I kind of just made everyone like put in without really explaining is that um, uh, I wanted there to be this idea of like the contact photo, but then also the contact photo can switch um so i and to me it's kind of like oh you know there's these uh you know when you're best friends with people um you would take silly photos of yourself on their phone so <laughs> or like silly photos of each other so that to me it's just like oh the, to me this is like what they would do it's just they would like take dumb photos and then they would just put it on as their contact and they'd be best friends so that's what i did with my best friend <laughs> yes! her, her contact it's relatable is like content. a terrible really photo is. of her <laughs> but it, it makes me laugh every time she calls so i have it <laughs> My sister, the personal story, my sister would um, hide uh, like baby photos of me, but like I would look um, like Topak or I'd have a tantrum and stuff because my dad would always take pictures of me whenever I was having a tantrum. <laughs> She'd hide them in like drawers and in the car and stuff. And then whenever she's like in a bad mood, she'd open a drawer and she'd start laughing because it made her feel better. And I was like, oh, thanks, sister. So this is like something like that, right? It's just I love it. the, the dumb pictures that make you feel happy. So that oh, was kind I of- I love that so much. I do, I do that exact same thing too with my cousin <laughs> she, she has a she can't take roller coaster photos you know like oh, so she makes a weird face every time so i have a whole album of every roller coaster <laughs> photo she's ever uh, taken and they're all terrible but they make me laugh so hard and i will i treasure it <laughs> oh that's so funny <laughs> all right so let's bring up that 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 art again real quick Okay, so you created Arazal. Arazal more than likely came first, I'm assuming. So how mm -hmm. did you create her friends? So 
me personally growing up i've always kind of had this like uh I, I, I fit into the anime protagonist stereotype of I always had a trio of friends um, <laughs> with me with me as the perceived protagonist. Uh, <laughs> so uh, I I had like the I always well, two of my closest friends growing up um, was uh, someone who is who was like Leah, who is very much like outgoing, um, would always speak up very loud, but also like uh, to me, I always perceived her as like someone who. Uh, um, not necessarily lived life to the fullest, but she tried. She always tried her best, and she always was there for her friends. So for me, that was like Leah's. Like, come on, let's just go out. Let's like let's take your mind off of these things. Um, and for Rosella, is also someone very dear to me. About like to me, Rosella is the friend that like I think Arsal always wants to be. Um, you have that friend who's like your uh, like an I someone that you kind of idolize. Uh, so to R Rosella, at the same time, is someone who Arsal wants to be but um, is also someone who constantly supports RSL and uh, wants her to be herself. So that was kind of Rosella and Leah for me, is like kind of just taking um, inspiration from my own group of friends. Okay, so so let's let's show the next uh, mm -hmm. let's show the next concept art too while we're while we're here, while we're again, just the <laughs> cutest character yeah. designs. I love the big bright smiles. <laughs> the so raised sweet. eyebrows is like it's <laughs> Oh. It's half just like, I'm ready for this. And also it's just like, oh, I don't want to be smiling this much in this <laughs> <laughs> So, So what went into, you know, writing Arizal's friends, like bringing out their personalities a little bit more? You said that they were, they were, you know, they're based on people you are friends with, but let's, let's turn to, to Joshua a little bit. Since you're, oh, yeah. you're bringing a, a little bit more to the table tier too, I want to hear how, how writing some of their dialogue or some of the, the text messages we see from them, mm -hmm. how that came to be. Oh man, it was a blast because obviously like the show is so rooted in Arsal and her talking to camera. So it was a blast to get her to talk to anyone else. <laughs> like as soon as, yeah, as, soon as we true. can have a conversation, it's like, oh, this is really fun because we can bring out other sides of our soul that are different. Like when you are sort of performing or like kind of performing in front of a camera when you're vlogging, it's like, that's kind of a persona that you have. It's an element of you. But when you can have a conversation with a close friend, it brings out this other form of you. So it's kind of like... Uh, designing that dialogue to be like, what parts of Arsal do we want to see in her relationship with Leah versus her relationship with Rosella? So to like to see different shades of Arsal was kind of like the motivation. So with Leah, it was like um, more of this like firm, like no, I have to, I have to stay in, and I have this is important to me, and this is how I'm going to like progress my my career as a record keeper, as a potential record keeper. And res with Rosella, it's like much like what Isa was saying. It's more of like this. You know, with e with Leo would be like, no, I'm gonna stay in and do this. Rosella, should I should I stay in and do this kind of a thing? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like this mentor <laughs> and this kind of equal to bring out different sides of of our saw, which was so it was so fun to to have her talk to the three characters that she gets to talk to to bring out, yeah, different sides of her. Okay, so now that we're past that a little bit, I, I kind of want to circle back to the beginning just for for a brief moment uh the room really does like encompass ours all's personality just taking a look at it we absolutely see a lot of her here is there anything that you placed in there in that room specifically that means something to you oh Ooh, like little easter eggs oh i've seen little fans easter. theorizing about all the items <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, that's like, Max there because of this. She must be like this because of this. Oh man! Yeah. Oh, that's a really good question. <laughs> because oh god, there was a good um, there was a good in joke uh when uh, the final background that um was laid out by Lauren Crozier and painted by Tess. Um, I put it in our uh in our our Slack group for our team. Um, I highlighted the uh the fossil on her thing and i went oh, she, uh, aerosol has a fossil she has to give it to blathers <laughs> so, <laughs> so that's just like one thing um but i actually have to give a lot of credit to al he uh our um environment and storyboard mm -hmm. artist he actually helped concept and really like nailed down everything i uh that was in that room i think the big thing for me was mostly just like i want a circle window in there but that was more of a, out of a fantasy of mine <laughs> <laughs> 
Um, I love that it, uh, the, so yeah. the circle window is kind of iconic too. It really, I mean, you can see it in pretty much every single version of, of the concept <laughs> art too. Yeah. But it, it really does set really itself that apart. Big mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. Um. All right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to take a quick moment to thank once again HBO Max for helping us and sponsoring the Animation Festival with energy and edgy, irreverent late night laughs. South Park, Rick and Morty, Max originals like Close Enough and Boondocks, the action packed animated adventures of the DC universe like Harley Quinn. Pretty much everything you ever want is going to be on HBO Max. You know, plus the magical animated storytelling of Studio Ghibli and the best anime from Crunchyroll. I'm going to shout out a couple of my favorites here. Close Enough has been super amazing. I really love it. It's really kind of that edgy, irreverent kind of comedy that we were talking about before. It's super fun. It's really off the wall, but it also somehow grounded in that familial weirdness of it all. Uh, I'd also like to, of course, shout out Kill la Kill because Christine, absolutely, totally amazing in Kill la Kill. If you haven't heard her, she's amazing in everything. But of course, you can it's check true. her out in Kill la Kill as well. <laughs> uh <laughs> And of course, since we're talking about going on an adventure, being young and venturing out in the world, we got to talk about Studio Ghibli's amazing film, Kiki's Delivery Service. Because you know what? We all want to get out there. We all want to have that adventure. And Kiki's Delivery Service definitely encapsulates that energy as well. Start streaming today. Download the app. Visit hbomax.com to start your experience and get a free trial. So thank you again, HBO Max, for sponsoring this. Okay. Now let's move on a little bit. And I talked about it a bit before because, you know, Christine's amazing. You check out Christine's IMDb page and it's 10 miles long because so talented. So Christine, um, I want you to talk a little bit about your career, your experience, and you know, what you hope for Arizal in the future. Hmm. Well, okay. Well, as far as I'm concerned. I've been doing voiceover for, I think <clears throat> November will be my 10 year anniversary. Wow. So, Congratulations. Yeah. That feels like a big milestone for me. Yeah. And yeah, I've, I think I have like over a hundred credits on like uh, behind the voice actors or IMDB Ooh. or something like that, which is crazy to me still. 10 but, for 10. <laughs> 10 for 10, I know. <laughs> Yeah, but I've been like, I've been the voice of, uh, I'm Sailor Saturn in Sailor Moon, I'm Mako from Kill la Kill, I'm Madoka in Madoka Magica, Azusa from k -On. That was actually my first ever, um, uh, my first ever audition was Azusa from k -On, and I got it, which is like unheard of. Like I did not think that was going to happen. <laughs> but Your then Azusa it, yeah, voice but then is got so the amazing, by the way. It's so oh, good. It's so cute. <laughs> when I listen back to it now, I'm like, oh, I sound like a little baby. I mean, I still sound like a, I still have babies now, so it's not that much different. Yeah, yeah. But, yeah. Uh, yeah, I'm like, I still haven't graduated from playing high schoolers. So, as you can see. You're still a high schooler now. Yeah, I'm still a high schooler. Hopefully, I'll be a high schooler until I'm 70. Who knows? Yeah. Like, true. Listen, but, listen um, from one voice actress to another, we're going to get, it's like, there's always that typecast. It's like, oh, you have this voice. Prepare to do that for the next 20 years. Forever. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But yeah, um, and yeah, I've been I've done video games, uh, live action dubbing. Um, what do you call it? I don't know where I was going with that. Oh, original animation. I have some original animation things coming out, and like, and RSL got to give me like a a nice taste of original animation because I don't do it that often. But it was so fun to record RSL like free. There's no lip flaps. I can just yeah. do what I want, and yeah, it gave. I think. It helped a lot with the performance because it gave me so much freedom and you guys obviously provided such a wonderful script to play around with and she had so much personality and things I could pick out and, you know, throw and emphasize with her and it was so much fun. And like, I mean, I don't know if you told the story already, but I like, and at the end I like cried during <laughs> the session, yeah. which was, so, it was the first time I'd ever met you guys. It was like so embarrassed and I was like, I'm so sorry that I'm crying. But yeah, like the work that you guys have done, like it, like, and I, again, I'm not just saying this because I'm part of the project. Like it truly means so much to me and so much to like the Asian community, the Filipino community, and hopefully to everybody else, because you know, the story deserves to be told. So yeah. 
Thanks, Christine. Thank you. Oh, you're welcome. That was so sweet. That was such an awesome oh, moment. There's the wholesomeness that, that I was totally expecting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I'm glad uh, you okay. didn't think I was like such a weirdo. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> if anything, I, there was a good like five, ten minutes after that session happened because it was like it was a long session because Christine had monologues to do. You oh, know, yeah. So, oh, yeah. I'm talking um, to myself the whole time. So, yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it was like a two hour session or something. And after that, Josh and I kept looking at each other for like 10 minutes. We're like, man, she's so good. She's so cool. Man, she was so cool. Oh, oh my god. No. Man, she was so she's so good. Like it was just this constant. It was amazing. It was like it was like waves was really of good. waves of like relief that 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 we found the right person. Because like oh. more so than any other show, like this is it's more than just the lead of this show. Like she is the show. It is just her <laughs> talking to camera. Like it needed to that be. That was a lot just of pressure right. too. But you nailed it. And we were like so <laughs> yeah, excited. It was awesome. Oh, thank you. <laughs> no, it was it was wonderful. I loved it. And yeah, I can't I cannot wait for Arisal to like leave the quarters. I mean, she's already kind of left the quarters of her bedroom. And you know, <laughs> yes. go out and explore the world as a mm -hmm. record keeper. Yeah. We got plans. Oh, you, oh, yeah. I know, I'm excited Christine, for them. <laughs> you just gave me the best segue in the entire world. Speaking <laughs> of <it>. Arizal <laughs> being out in the world, we have a clip that we're gonna show. Oh, and we're gonna, we're, gonna, we're gonna be quiet, we're gonna show it all off first, and then we're gonna talk about it. So roll the clip. Honestly, <laughs> I thought my vision was already failing, but it turns out it was just a scary wave of sand coming for my life. So, tent set up, <laughs> bam. Okay. So there's so something to short. note first. So there's something yeah. to note first. That is not Christine doing the voice of Arazal. <laughs> that is the lovely Issa doing the voice of Arazal as some temp audio. So... <laughs> <laughs> So let's let's talk about this. This is something that nobody's ever seen before. So there's a lot to discuss. Let's 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 play it one more time. We're gonna talk over it now. Uh, Issa, run us through what's actually happening here. Yeah, so we had an idea of a pilot script for the longest time. And one of the things that I really wanted to do was actually create test animations. Uh, being an animator and being part of the production pipeline initiative actually kind of really helped enable me to kind of be like, okay, well, I get to do my own thing. Like, let's actually like make some do <laughs> make some effort and really put punch this out. And so this is part of the original pitch that you guys are seeing. And so we're showing it because that's not. It's not what the pitch, it's not what our first episode would be if we were to ever release one. Um, but there's been a lot of questions about like, what would Arisal's vlogs look like when she's out of her room? Like, what would that be? And this is actually one of the um, specific clips that I identified out of the script that was like, hey, so it's not just Arisal talking to the camera. Like, we're not just going to see her in front of the camera like we're doing right now we're not like talking to like people or disembodied voices like it it'll be there's a lot going to be a lot of elements of story time where you hear her talking and narrating over stuff and uh we'll be able to see the action of whatever she's talking about like it, it's i think um that's kind of the part that i'm really excited about with um, the prospect or the idea of like what Josh and I were thinking about what season, uh, what a season of our recorded by RSL could look like, because we're not just going to do vlogs, we're going to be able to like break that idea of just being like, oh, she is actually mm -hmm. telling something. And it is going to be what she says versus what you will see. Um, so a lot of active viewing, as we call it, <laughs> in TV or whatever. <laughs> so this is one of the. There's a lot of, of people. And like I said, yeah. They're, oh, they're, are they excited? There's a lot chat? of people in the chat. <laughs> There's a lot of people in the chat who are just saying the little clap that she does. They love yeah. it. Yeah. Oh, it was my favorite. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> the, 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 the tent pops. It's like yeah. <laughs> 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 There is a lot of heart in that animation. It's a very short clip, but you can actually see a tremendous amount of like what she's going through. You can tell that she's just like, oh, here's the sandstorms that I was warned about. I really not entirely <laughs> certain how to how to handle this. Here's the tent popping up. It's like, oh, cool. I have the, you know, I have some shelter now. I'm very <laughs> excited that he's like, you just throw it out there and then bam, tent, fantastic. 
will that help her? Will that make her feel safe? You know, there's this whole like range of emotions that, you know, she could be going through and you see on her face a lot of, you know, different changes in her, her body movement really like sells everything in that very short clip. And gosh, it's, it's so cool. The first time I saw it, I'm just like, oh my I'm gosh, I kidding. want this show immediately, please. Yes. <laughs> please, I need this. Thank you. Man. I got so many comments saying that when if her, when the Prelude Source came out, they're like, this better be a full series. Like, you can't leave it like this. <laughs> like, we need to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, that last episode kind of like everybody was just like, oh, wait, 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 wait. No, you can't. There. Yeah. <laughs> There's. Oh man, I I think um, I speak for Josh and me. So Josh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think every time we see like the final edit for the last episode, we always kind of like tear up. Oh it, yeah, it's just like oh god, we've been working on this for a while, yeah. and like <laughs> the emotional beats we really want to be able to show and like tell the story with recorded by ourselves. Like it means uh, it. Josh and I kind of keep it close to our hearts, um, but also it's like something we really want to be able to like express. Um, so I feel like, to me anyway, this is definitely kind of like, oh, I feel like you guys are kind of looking into my diary. And it's, um, <laughs> it's, it's just my innermost ideas and thoughts. And if if you have constructive criticism, okay, thank you. <laughs> I will I will take that to heart. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite okay, things about so... that last episode is uh, whenever Al was working on it and uh, or boarding oh, yeah. it or like whenever it would come up in conversation al would just make sure to go out of his way to 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 acknowledge me and Issa and go how dare you how dare you do this <laughs> how dare you leave it like this you have to you have to continue you have to keep telling us what happens it was the best yeah. it was so fun listen that's the best part of the prelude you got to always leave them wanting just a little bit more mm -hmm. you got to tease them with with the what ifs and the possibilities because i mean in the world of moctopod there's a lot of possibilities isa you've talked to me uh for years about everything that you wanted to throw into this and yeah. there's a lot i mean we don't even have enough time <laughs> to even start going into it but i do want to do want to harp on you just a little bit more isa i'm sorry i have to i have to do this how is it like stepping into the role of of Arzal quite literally and then handing it off to Christine? Oh man, um, Josh actually said it. It, it was a relief. <laughs> uh, we that so there was like a little <laughs> blog post uh, that Rooster Teeth did when our recorded by Arzal came out, and it was um, they had asked that question like, "What was the most stressful part about um, bringing the show?" Um, uh, making making the show come to life and it was actually choosing the main character because um <laughs> voice acting I, like for me anyway i how do i put it there's already i feel like josh and i already have a lot of responsibilities uh, and so kind of being uh the voice for rsl for the longest time we talked about how it's like we always thought it was my voice because that was the temp voice we worked with right and to me i was like it's it's always temporary but man it was it was definitely kind of not a, a journey there it is uh to find um someone um and i did remember i do remember actually like sitting in the office just like kind of going like imdb or like youtube like Whoa, what do they sound like actually doing research and then when we finally like found christine it was just like oh <laughs> this, this is gonna work and i was so relieved because i was like oh man uh it, it is wonderful and also the fun like christine and, and um and christine and i almost have the same glasses and I that know. same <laughs> and that day too we also wore like a similar white sweater yeah! so it's just oh like my why God, we the guy person? Person? <laughs> we yeah. wore the exact same thing to session that's yeah. so crazy and it's just like oh god this is perfect <laughs> i'm so relieved <laughs> So it was it was a, a weight off my shoulders and but it's also nice to know that Christine is there to share the weight with me. Um and that Christine was super willing. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> oh no, of course. I, again, I'm so thrilled to even be part of this. It's amazing. So thank you for choosing me and letting me carry some of the load. <laughs> Okay, speaking of thanking everybody, I'd like to say, hey, thanks to AT&T 5G for helping us out and, you know, sponsoring all of this. AT&T presents RTX this year. Thanks to them, we're able to bring all this awesome stuff from RTX 
directly to you, thus RTX at home. AT&T's 5G network is now available nationwide. Whether you're at home or on the go, you'll be enjoying coverage in more places. Plus, AT&T doesn't make it complicated. 5G access is included in all customer unlimited plans at no extra cost. For more information about AT&T 5G, visit att.com forward slash 5G. Thank you, AT&T for sponsoring RTX. We very much appreciate it. And you know what? All of our community does too, because they get to enjoy RTX at home. Okay. Now we're gonna take things back one more time because we asked people for some questions. So we're gonna do some Q and A in this last little bit of time we have here. So first off, uh, Kaito Dan said, what was it like directing and animating scenes around the idea of presenting it as a series of vlogs? What challenges were there when keeping track of how there's always a camera recording Arizal's discussions and actions? Ooh. Ooh, Josh, you want to hit the writing part? Yeah, the, yeah. The first thing that comes to mind was like this interesting challenge of like uh, Arizal's relationship with the camera. Like, I think you can kind of track I mean, hopefully you can track in the four prelude episodes, the logs, uh, how she starts talking to the camera in the very beginning and then how she concludes talking to the camera. And the relationship she has with it is very different. Like in the in the last episode, she's very, very open and honest and vulnerable. And I think she works her way up to that. In the beginning, it's very kind of formal and it's presentational, like I'm doing this assignment. And as, she, as we see her struggle through a lot of the things she does, she opens up to it more and more and it becomes like this this video diary thing. So like keeping that in mind, I think was really important, like that, that she's going through this arc in more ways than one. And, and that was like this interesting specific thing about the fact that it was vlogs that I think we kept in mind throughout the entire production. Mm, mm, mm. What a good answer. Josh, you're so smart. <laughs> <laughs> Fantastic answer. 10 out of 10, everybody. Big, big applause for Josh. Big oh, applause no. for Josh. <laughs> So, okay, so the Shadow GG says, why did you guys choose logs to present this story? And Issa, I have to ask this question to you because this was something that you talked about a long time ago. You talked about this, mm -hmm. like, gosh, it was probably what, it's like three years ago to me. It was just like, I wanna make a show, but it's sort of like a vlog show and it's gonna be animated and there's all this traveling and then you just kind of like, it's like it's complicated. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. The, the, the idea of logs. I guess it it does kind of stem from like how I I think my first challenge question that I tried to answer was how do you justify an animated show that is a vlog and telling that narratively, right? So to me, my answer was actually kind of just like doing logs in this um, record keeper format or this keeping records. It's like, oh, it's archival, uh, which kind of lends to the idea of like, oh, well, if it's archival, maybe there's this justification that you can do whatever you want with it, right? Um, so I, it, I, ironically, it's like a limitation, but also uh, very freeing at the same time because uh, because you because we have that limit it's kind of just like oh well actually we can kind of go around this like what does it mean if it's not or if it's not a log anymore um what would it look like if it's uh what if it's not from being recorded from a camera or if, is there another camera recording um so I don't, yeah i, I kind of just wanted to take that challenge of like uh being able to speak from a vlog format and this log format in general. Um, the other thing too is like, I just wanted them to be uh, very short and what we, what I like to use the word like digestible, um, making sure that they're short episodes so that way people will like be able to sit and pay attention for like a good five minutes. And then after that, they'll be like, oh, okay, I can relax now or something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm an avid, I'm an avid YouTube watcher. So I think to me, it's like, uh, I understand uh, as an audience member, what I'm clicking on, if it's like an hour long video essay versus like, oh, this video essay is only like five minutes. Okay. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I, I, uh, my, my attention span is very short now. So <laughs> short logs it is. <laughs> okay. So what zero is life asks, is the world of Arizal completely original or does a neo, or is it a neo future of our world. 
Ooh, I do oh, yeah, have I've heard some people say that. Yeah, I do have the exact answer for this. It is uh Neo Future. Um it's like who I I said I had the answer and I actually don't remember <laughs> the exact but um <laughs> let's say it is it is like very much like thousands of years in the future. So um the world has changed. Uh and at the same time it's not it, they will uh, this world will definitely reference things that we know now like um so for example that Kiyomi Zadera drop um and the last episode like they'll definitely reference real world things that exist now um but at the same time I personally actually just wanted to construct a world where it can be something of an ex of an escape um so yeah being able to kind of like make a world quote unquote from scratch uh but also not necessarily world that we've seen um and then imagine like okay well if we had this technology what would what would be what it would it be like i can't words today um so that's the answer it's neo future okay one more question collection says are there any characters we've seen so far arizal leah rosella dante etc that are lgbtqia plus there was one episode where i believe it was arizal's friend rosella who put a heart at the end of one of her text messages and called her an adorable bookworm this is my lingering thought. <laughs> <laughs> uh, one of the things that I definitely, um, when I approached Josh with this idea and also pitched along with the original idea was like, this is our recorded by RSL uh, is um, our biggest tentpole for the series is diversity first and foremost. Um, and it doesn't necessarily mean the color of our skin, but it also means uh, what our sexuality is. So um, for the show proper that we had originally pitched, yes, they're absolutely going to be LGBTQ characters. There's there's a lot of them. Arisol, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, uh, just kind of like throwing this in the vague, the void. Um, Arisol, we're, we're going to explore that um, because as much as recorded, uh, recorded by Arsal is about growing up, which does kind of imply that there is a, mm, a journey, an adventure uh, of finding your identity. I also have this like eyeliner mark on my eyelid that I kind of wipe off. <laughs> anyway, um, I can't see it. <laughs> oh, thank you. <laughs> um, this journey of finding your identity and how your um, how sexuality is fluid. So you know whether or not she's queer from the onset, or is she queer later? It's it's fluid <laughs> identity, gender and sexuality. It's a concept, you know. Um, so definitely. <laughs> definitely want to explore that and i'm not going to say anything specific for specific characters at the moment but that's because i want to leave room for that if mm -hmm. that makes sense mm -hmm. okay so we only have a couple <laughs> moments left and i have a question now because oh. if anybody's been paying attention to my social media or any of my streams on rttv or anything i've been saying is recorded by arizal has quickly become one of my favorite animated series of all time. It immediately leapt into my heart the moment I saw Arizal in her room and listened to her speak. It really resonated in a lot of different ways. And seeing her, you know, grow is something I desperately want to see. So what can the audience do, the people watching right now, the people watching this panel, what can they do to help make sure we get more Arizal in the future? Buy a shirt. <laughs> yes, please. Buy a shirt. And buy one ten. for you and yeah, ten, and for right. your closest friends, and, and, your trio. Yeah, your trio. Um, <laughs> if you have a big Asian family, buy one for oh, yeah. one of them. Oh yeah, we're totally sending you. We're gonna yeah. like, buy on box all the way yes. to the Philippines polo shirt. <laughs> That's amazing. Um let your friends know. I think one of the things uh, that has made our, the prelude run for Recorded by RSL so successful and will continue to be successful in the future is that word of mouth that like um, letting letting everyone know that this show exists, like they should check it out. And um, uh, hmm, I don't want to say like at people to make this show <laughs> because like <laughs> we're trying, man. Um, 
so you know pl plans are in motion there's there's things happening behind the scenes that uh that um it's gonna take a bit but uh keep keep what i was gonna say keep in tune i'm like i feel like i'm being fobby right now um <laughs> stay tuned <laughs> Stay tuned for any news, but also keep that recorded by RSL Spirit alive. Um, yeah. Draw, draw fan art. <laughs> <laughs> I love. You know what? I, I do life. actually have one more, one more question for Christine. How has it oh, been yeah. reacting to seeing everybody drawing fan art of Arizal? Just like there's been a lot. There's been so much. Yeah, I know it's so cool. I mean, again, like I'm so like grateful and excited about how quickly everyone's latched onto this show and i get that just speaks to like what a wonderful job you guys did again because immediately like the next day people were like sending like ours all fan art and it was oh, crazy yeah. and mm -hmm. it's i mean for you guys i'm sure that must be so like flattering but it was <laughs> yeah i mean it's so cool i'm just so glad that everyone has connected to it the way that i feel like i have and mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's the best. Thanks, Christine. <laughs> yeah, of course. I'm serious. You guys are like, I don't even, what do you, I was about to say OG, not OG. The G, the G O, the GOAT. G ah, the GOAT. Oh, thank you. You guys are GOAT. <laughs> Go all right. Well, Go that's goes. all been recorded by our Azal panel, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us. If you haven't seen the full series yet, what are you doing? Come on. It's all on roosterteeth.com. And I genuinely encourage you to watch the sister series recorded by Issa that delves into a lot of the things that built up to the creation of recorded by our Azal. If you want more our Azal, then you know what to do now. Let your voices be heard. And you know what? We're listening. Thank you so much, everybody, for joining us. Have a wonderful rest of your RTX at home and enjoy the next panel. <laughs>